Welcome back. Today we're going to be tearing down and repasting this Dell Radeon RX 6700 XT. I've already got it out of the computer and I should have everything we need to complete this. I've got a small Phillips head screwdriver, a plastic uh, puller to uh, get the fan connection undone, and our Cryotech Extreme Thermal Grizzly Thermal Paste. Let's get started. Pretty sure the only screws we need to take out are these four right here, so let's go ahead and get that started. Get them all started before we totally take them out. That one's out, that one's out, that one's out, and that one's out. All right. All right, now that that's out, let's go ahead and take that off, set it to the side. And on this particular 6700 XT, we don't have to take the PCI bracket cover off. And we don't even need to disconnect the fan to separate the card from the heatsink. You can just flip it over like this and the cord's long enough. Alright, now that we've got our card separated, we can take a look and see what we're working with. We've got our core here. And the original pasting job doesn't look bad. It looks like it had pretty good coverage and it's not like yeah, this is an old card and it's had time to dry up and not perform like it used to. But I think with this Cryo Not Extreme Thermal Grizzly paste with a way higher K factor, we're gonna get a better cooling out of it. The first step in this repaste, we're gonna go ahead and get this old paste off. I tried to use a paper towel folded up, dipped in a little rubbing alcohol, and using the edge to try to get in between the transistors and the uh, actual core itself, but it didn't work out very good. So I ended up just using it on the copper heatsink, which worked out because it probably saved me 10 Q-tips in the long run. I started in on the core working from the inside out since that's the easiest part to clean and then working my way around close to the transistors I had to be really careful because I didn't want the uh, the cotton on the q-tip to snag a transistor and risk ripping it off because that wouldn't be very good. Now that we got that old thermal paste cleaned up, it's time for the star of the show. This Cryonaut Extreme Thermal Grizzly Thermal Paste. This stuff, the extreme version, is actually pink. And I'm for it, because I am tired of all this gray. Thermal Grizzly, keep it up. All right. Unscrew that. Put on one of our application tips. Now some may disagree, but I think this repaste turned out pretty good. I really liked the spreader tip and you actually get to see the paste kind of spread out instead of just putting a dollop and then sandwiching everything back together. You don't get to see it spread out. But here's where this repaste gets interesting. You see this little metal ring around the core of the GPU? It's metal to metal contact to, for heat transference. Why not put thermal paste on it too?
Now this part, I'll admit, came out a little sloppy, but in my defense, the applicator tip works best on a large flat surface. So let's come back after a quick little cleanup. All right, I think we're gonna call this done, this thermal grizzly paste. I don't know if it's because the, it's the extreme version. I don't know if the regular would have done better, but it's very hard to spread in the little applicator they give you doesn't work well in these more precise areas. If anything, it just pulls off everything you just put on and then moves it to a new location. It's really hard to spread evenly, but um, I think once we get it put together, it'll be perfect. And the little bit that I got on the little dies, I cleaned up the best I could, but it shouldn't affect it whatsoever because this is uh, non-electrically conductive. So it's not going to cause any sort of shorting or anything like that. So I think we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and put it back together and we'll test it out and see how it does. One thing I do like about this card is it's actually super easy to get apart and get back together. Literally it's just four screws and you're done. Didn't have to take the fan off, didn't have to take this back um, slot cover off. It was re actually really easy. Let's try to go ahead and get these lined up. All right, and we're together. Now to get our little bracket back on, and it should spread out that thermo paste pretty evenly. Get one side started, move to the other side, get it started. We want it to suck down evenly and spread evenly, so we're gonna be doing some swapping around. good we don't want to over tighten but we want to make sure there's a good connection so as soon as that screw starts touching and it stops going in you're good to go all right that was our AMD Radeon RX 6700 teardown and repaste so now all's left is to get it back in the computer and see if it actually made a difference all right, see you then. All right, now to see if we accomplished anything. I'm gonna be testing the GPU using the built-in AMD Adrenaline software. As you can see, everything's default, nothing's special. I'm gonna go ahead and start a test for, uh, I don't know, let's just do that, 100 seconds. And then I'm gonna to jump to the end to show the results. Here's the results from our before test. I should have recorded a different way since I'm using all the GPU for the stress test. It didn't really record correctly. And this was the last clip showing any data I can use for comparison. The GPU temperature is 81 degrees Celsius and our core junction temp is 102 degrees Celsius with a power consumption of 185 watts and a fan speed of 3006 RPMs. Let's go ahead and get to our after test and see some numbers so we can do some comparison. All right, now for the results of our repaste. I went ahead and reset everything to factory in the AMD Adrenaline software, so we're exactly the same. Let's head back over here and go to tuning. We're on the default tuning. Let's go ahead and start the 600 second uh, duration stress test exactly like the one before and we'll see if there's any difference now for some comparison before the repaste we we're running a clock speed of 2528 megahertz with a fan speed of 3006 rpms and 100, 185 watt power consumption our gpu temperatures were 81 degrees with a junction temp of 102 degrees celsius and now with a longer test run time i should add plus a higher clock speed and a lower fan and power draw we get a one degree higher card temp and a seven degree lower junction temperature, which explains the added temperature of the card because it's now able to get rid of the junction temperature faster and more efficiently, so it raises the temp of the card as a whole. All in all, these are some pretty good results, but I think the biggest difference you'll see is in-game, because the card will no longer be maxing out the junction temp to 110, 
and then lowering your FPS to get it under control. I saw a 20 frame per second difference in Ark Survival Evolved at max settings, running around 97% usage since this repaste, and the junction stays just under 100 degrees most of the time. Let me know in the comments if you give this repaste a try, and be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'll catch you in the next one.